Hey YouTube, today I'm gonna to go over how to send and query data from a Node.js API. Today I'm gonna to go over how to use URIs to change the behavior of the API. The URI is the portion of the URL that follows the address. We're gonna implement routing, which is, uses the URI to change that behavior inside of Express. We're going to use query parameters and URI parameters to filter the data being returned from the API. And we're also going to set up an HTTP POST method to send data to the API. All right, let's get started. In the API we built so far, we're just using a forward slash. So there is no URI that follows, which is why app.get responds with hello world. We're going to change that today. So the way that we can add another route into our API is by creating a new handler here. So I'm going to create app.get. And instead of just a forward slash, I'm actually going to put forward slash books, which is what we're primarily going to be working with for the remainder of this series. And then we're going to pass in another asynchronous callback function that takes in the request and the response, both abbreviated as req and res. We're going to open the arrow function, open some curly brackets, and we're going to pass back an object called books. But instead of using the send command, we're going to use this JSON command, which is going to format our data as JSON. And I'm just going to put books here as the placeholder. Now I'm going to add some dummy data into the API, which you can get from the repository that's linked in the description below. And this is just some sample data of books that I found on the internet. So now if I save this, let's open the terminal and we're going to issue the command npm run dev to start our API. Our API is started. So let's go ahead back into Postman. And we're going to add a new folder on the left-hand side. You can do this by right-clicking on the collection and click add folder. And we're going to name this folder books just to keep things organized. And then right click and add a request, say get books. And let's double click on that request to open it. And now we're going to type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000 for the port forward slash books. Okay, let's save this. Go ahead and click send. And we can see our API has returned our data for us down here in the JSON format just as we pasted it in. Okay, so let's head back into our API and we're gonna close, we're gonna close this terminal window here for a moment. And so far we're adding an extra route into our index.js. And in this case, because we're only adding a single route, it's actually not that bad, but the more routes that you add into an API, the, the less organized this index.js file is going to be. So instead we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna name the folder routes and then create a new file inside of here called books.js. And we're actually going to move our routing function into here and import this into our index.js. So inside of books.js, we're gonna say const express equals require express. And then we're also gonna create the router and that can be set with new express.router and then open close parens. And then I can export the router by using module.exports equals router. So now let's add a couple lines of space in here for us to work with. Let's go back into our index.js. We're gonna take the same dummy data that we have here. We're gonna move this first into books. And then we also are going to add our route in here as well, but it's gonna look a little bit different. So instead of app.get, we're gonna say router.get. And instead of passing in books here, we're just going to pass a forward slash because we're going to register this router with the books URI into the index.js file. So we don't need it here twice. So we just need it to forward slash here. And we're going to pass an asynchronous function with both the request and the response. Pass that into an arrow function and response.json and then pass in our books object just like we did before. Clean this up and fix our spacing here. Okay, let's save this. And now that that books file is done, we're gonna get rid of our app.get here. Head up to the top of the file. We're going to import our routes by saying const book routes equals require, and then pass in the relative path of the file we just created. Okay, and then underneath our app.get, we're gonna add some more lines here just to give us some spacing. And we're going to say app.use 
and then pass in forward slash books here, and then pass in our book routes file. So let's save this, head back into Postman, and we're just gonna send the exact same request just to make sure that we're getting data back. And provided the data comes back exactly the same way as it did before, we have now successfully reorganized our route into that file. Now we're gonna explore some different ways that we can query data. Um, there are two primary ways that you can query data within an API. The first one is called a query parameter, and that is formatted inside of the URI like question mark and then ID equals whatever ID is. We'll have to add code into our route handler in order to properly query the data that we have here, but we're gonna get into that. And then the second way we can do that is by using what's called a URI parameter. And if we pass this in like forward slash one, Common practice is to return a single book with an ID of one using this pattern. Okay, let's head back into books.js and we're going to update this function to handle that. So I'm gonna create an empty object up top to hold our response data. So let response data, just like that. And now we need to check to see if a query parameter has come in. And we can do this by typing if, open the parens, request.query.id exists we're going to set the response data equal to books dot filter and then this is going to take an arrow function as well we're going to pass a book in and then we want to see if the book dot id is equivalent to a number converted version of that query parameter request dot query dot id all query parameters come through as strings, and because we're comparing this against an ID, which is a number, we need to convert that string into a number like so. So this should take care of that. And we also want to check to see if there is no response data, which means the query parameter is not passed in. We're just gonna set the response data to the book's object so it returns everything. And we can do this by saying if response data is equivalent to undefined, we're going to set the response data equal to the books, okay? And then we need to, instead of returning books, we're going to return response data instead. Okay, so back in Postman, we're gonna go ahead and send the request again, just to make sure we get the data back that we expect. Good, where we're getting everything. Now let's add question mark ID equals one, and go ahead and click send there as well. And we should return only the single book with an ID of one. And we can test this with the different IDs that are inside of our test data as well, like two. Now you'll also notice in Postman, inside the params tab in the request area, a query parameter has been added here with a key of ID and a value of one. This becomes very handy with testing query parameters as you can quickly check and uncheck this to add it and remove it from the URI. You could change the value here as well. So we can change that to three and click send. And you can see it updates our URI as well. So if you ever need to test a lot of query parameters, but you don't want to necessarily type them all into the URI, you could have some better control of them by using the query parameters area right here inside of Postman. Now let's update our route handler to handle a URI parameter that could come in. We have to update the URI that's passed here by adding a colon ID and then a question mark. This tells express.js to look for a URI parameter um, in the following path here, so the path that's following books, and we're going to give it a variable name of ID, and the question mark basically tells the handler that this is optional. So, so this route handler will address the request whether or not that URI parameter actually exists. But we do need to check to see if it does exist, so we're gonna do that now. So let's add some space after response data here. And we're gonna check this to see if the URI parameter is passed in by using request.params.id. And then if it does exist, instead of using filter, we're gonna use find to return a single object instead of an array. So response data equals books.find, pass in the book, book.id triple equals number, and then instead of request.query, we're gonna use request.params.id, just like that. And then we're going to add an else statement here. And we're just going to move this check inside the else statement, because if the URI parameter is set, 
we only want to do this one time. We don't want to check to see if a query is set as well. So let's save this, head back into Postman, and let's test out our updated route handler. So get rid of all of your query parameters and just type in forward slash one, click send. Now you can see we've returned a single object as opposed to an array with just that ID of one. And we'll test this out with an ID of two. And then finally, we can check to see that the query parameter still works by using question mark ID equals one, send that. And we still receive the data we expect. So now we're going to explore what it takes to send data to an API. Inside of the HTTP spec, there are different actions or methods that can be used to handle the request differently. Now we've been using the router.git, which maps to a git request. The spec defines a creating of an object of using the post request. So let's add router.post, and we're going to add just a normal forward slash for the URI and then pass in our normal async request and response function. We'll get used to seeing this a lot throughout the series. And we're gonna make this extremely simple. We're gonna say books.push, and then pass in the request body, which we'll sh I'll show you how to set that in Postman when we get over there. And then provided there are no errors, we wanna set the response status, so response.status is 201, and then send, nothing after that. 201 maps to the HTTP response status code of created, which is why we're using this here. The default is 200, which basically stands for OK. And we can use these different statuses to inform our API consumers what happened when the request had completed. Now, before we can use this code, we need to install a piece of what's called middleware into Express called Body Parser. Body Parser is going to help us to translate a JSON body into something that Express can more easily work with in this body object. So let's open up our terminal again. You can kill your API if you haven't done so already. Issue command npm install body dash parser. And once that's installed, you can npm run dev to start your API up again. Close this. We need to head back into index.js because we're going to add this middleware directly into the index file. And we need to import body parser. So I'm going to put this before my routes just to keep things organized const body parser equals require body hyphen parser. And then we can add the middleware into express by using app.use and then body parser dot JSON. Let's save this, head back into Postman, and we're gonna create a new request in our books folder. And we're gonna say post book and save it. Let's open up the request. We're going to change our method on the left hand side from git to post. You can see there's quite a long list of different methods you can use. Uh, the most common ones are git, post, put, patch, and delete. And let's say http colon slash slash localhost colon 3000 just forward slash books. We don't need to need add, we don't need to add anything else after this URI here. Now if we head over to the body portion here, I'm going to set the body to raw and change the type on the right hand side down to JSON. And we're going to add some JSON here that's similar to the book model that we've been working with. So open up curly brackets for just the standard object. We're going to set an ID of four because we know that's not being used right now. And if we go back and look at our data itself, we can see we have an ID, we have an ISBN, and we have a title. I'm just going to copy these here paste this in here and let's reformat our text a little bit. I'm going to change the ISBN because technically books ISBNs are supposed to be unique. So we'll change that last number to a six and we're going to change the title of the book to my new book. Okay, let's go ahead and save our request and click send. Now, if you look down here on the status, you should get a 201 created, which means everything likely went uh, according to plan. So now if we head back into get books, let's get rid of the query parameters. We use the query parameters tab here to uncheck it and click send to get the books. Now, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see inside of our dummy data that we defined, we now have a new item of my new book. So there's a couple of issues with this approach. Since we're defining our dummy data, 
in the file itself, and we've added the book to that dummy data, that technically is running in memory, which basically means that when our API is restarted, um, all this data is going to go away. Everything that we've added, the, the books one, two, and three will still be there, but anything we add after that will go away. So in the next video, we're gonna look at how to save data into a database. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share the video. I'm also live right here on YouTube every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. For channel updates or to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev or join my Discord using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.